Hi, everyone. My name is Shade Richardson. I am a manager of practice programs at the School of Public Health. What that means for you all, which you'll hear me talk about today, is that I am over the Public Health Action Support Team and sort of our strategic partnerships and community engagement. I am also an alum of the school. I was in the Health Behavior and Health Education Department, and I did the dual degree with the School of Social Work. And hi everyone, I'm, I'm Kate Wilhelmy. Uh, I work with Sade in the practice office. My background is in uh, K-12 education. I found my way to public health when I was getting my master's in at the School of Education at Michigan. I uh, spent the last few years in the epidemiology department and um, now I'm working in the practice office overseeing the contact tracing core, applied practice experiences and uh, faculty engagement. So to, to start us off, just a little bit of, a, of an overview uh, or definition of what is public health practice from the Association of Schools of Public Health Council on public health practice, the strategic, organized, and interdisciplinary application of knowledge, skills, and competencies necessary to perform essential public health services and other activities to improve the population's health. So in our office, we work very closely, not only with partners within the School of Public Health and within the university, but also with um, partners in the broader community um, in southeastern Michigan, across the state, country, and also in other countries as well. So we're um, providing the opportunity to take what you're learning in your classes and apply it um, in uh, public health situations and, um, and you know, challenges and opportunities and things like that. So to give you a sense of how the practice office is set up and structured within our school is we sit in the Office of Student Engagement and Practice or OSEP, which is one of many acronyms that you will come to know if you decide um, to pursue your degree here. So we sit um, underneath the dean of the school and then we have a few um, associate deans over different um, areas and um, OSEP sits under the associate dean for student engagement and practice which is comprised of academic affairs, career development, student life, and then the practice office. So we all work together at the school level and also um, in partnership and collaboration with each of the different departments in the, in the school to make sure that um, there's awareness and education about the different opportunities that are available um, in, in practice. And so the sort of mission of, of our office in, in particular um, builds and nurtures individual community and organizational capacity for improved population health and greater health equity. Um, so it's a big goal, but there are a lot of different ways to engage and to interact, not just with, with us, but with, with our partners and also with students across the school. Um, we'll go to the next slide. So what does that kind of look like um, you know, in, in practice? So we take um, the student engagement piece um, with, with all of you um, and combine it with workforce development. So what are the skills and things that you will need when you go out into whatever job you pursue after graduation? And then add to that the community engagement piece. We are lucky to have a lot of resources, not just within the school, but across the university about what does it mean to engage with and enter um, in into a, a community um, and what does that look like and how, and so those, these are some of the, the skills and sort of personal introspection and reflection that you have the opportunity to do during um, your time as a student through, through the practice office. And so all of this kind of falls under that umbrella, not just of practice, but also technical assistance um, uh, with, our, with our partners and for all of you as students. And so, a broad portfolio in the public health practice office, which um, Shade and I kind of share, and there's some overlap and then um, different things that we work on, um, but, but collaborate on together. And so like uh, we have our public action support team or FAST, which Shade will talk about in a moment, um, some courses. So there's opportunities to actually, you know, earn credit um, for, for the work that you do in, in the practice office. There's a, a fellowship, the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship, um, be a 
applied practice experience, which is a graduation requirement, which is similar to, um, but has sort of its own uh, requirements from the summer internship, but those two things sort of work work together. Um, we also have our contact tracing core, uh, thanks to COVID-19, so a, an opportunity to, to really apply um, and, and practice public health. Uh, we also have our Region 5 Training Center, uh, which is compiled of uh, several Great Lakes states in the in the region. So Michigan is one of them. And then a practice advisory council, which brings together faculty members within the school with several local um, health departments from across the state um, to better understand how, you know, um, academia and practice can can work together. And so with that, I will uh, hand it off to, to Sade. Yeah. So approaches to the work. So when we think of community engagement, we're looking at these mutually beneficial partnerships. Um, a big thing about it is we don't typically go into communities where we're not invited, especially when it comes to FAST and the work that we're doing. So we're thinking, what do the partnerships look like? What is that common interest we're working towards? Is there an identified need? The time, because as students, you're probably there for just two years or however long your program takes. So ensuring that um, we aren't over committing and we're able to actually do the projects perhaps in a semester or maybe some one-time engagement as well as if it's the right project at the right time. So do we have people are available? Do we have that availability to do it? And is it something that we want to engage in? You can also think of this in a way with community engagement and service learning, there are these two buckets that are coming together. So you'll be learning, doing, and reflecting with the different opportunities that we have for students to be engaged. So the public health action support team, we've mentioned FAST, but what exactly is it? Um, so the goal of FAST is to increase practical interdisciplinary learning opportunities for students at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. It is open to graduate level students at the moment, um, but the mission is to promote public health practice by providing student opportunities to assist local and state public health entities to advance their mission to improve community health. So as FAST members, you will be able to practice exploring different public health challenges, serve alongside community practitioners and fellow students and deploy regionally, nationally, and throughout the world to address emerging 21st century public health challenges while gaining that practical field experience. So the big picture with FAST is there's a skill development bucket. So as FAST members, there are certain trainings you're required to do. One of them is a FEMA course, there's like a study certificate to learn about responsible research and ethics. Um, there's stuff around like identity and how that plays into community work, engaging and entering communities and other trainings as you are members because we want you to have skills by the time you leave that you can apply going off into the world as practitioners. There's also that interdisciplinary collaboration piece. So oftentimes you may find yourself siloed, self siloed into your specific departments. FAST gives you an opportunity to work with people in epidemiology, nutrition, um, HBHE, biostatistics, PhD students, first year and second year master students. So really a wide variety of people that you can collaborate across with different projects and the opportunity to serve, right? You're coming in to self for some people, you may be from Michigan or for others, you're not from Michigan and you wanna get involved in the local community as well as the global community as a whole. So this will be a great opportunity to do that. So these are some examples of things that have been done in the past. FAST has been around since 2005, so this is not an extensive list by any means. Um, we've done different projects with the Community Family Life Center. Um, we've gone to the US Virgin Islands to help the CDC do a CASPER, which is this community-wide survey. Um, we've assisted the Genesee County Public Health Department with their Healthy Halloween. We've assisted with flu clinics. And I know you may be wondering, because we're in this virtual environment, how this works. Um, we have been adjusting to what the virtual world looks like. And currently we have students working with three different community organizations on different projects. So with the Healthy Dearborn Coalition, the students right now are working on an equity assessment tool for them with the Community Family Life Center. They're working on an educational curriculum for their after school program and a volunteer management toolkit. And some students are starting working with an organization called Unified. They have a syringe access program and they need help coming up with an evaluation plan for that. All of these are skills that are applicable in the real world within public health. 
So we're definitely finding ways to get connected and engaged in the community. Um, we've also had students assist with flu clinics on campus and they get the PPE to be able to do that as well. With the FAST courses, so there are three courses that are typically offered. They will not be offered this year, unfortunately, because a large part of this component is to go, it's usually offered in the spring, but it's to go to these places. So the Texas and Grenada sessions actually run concurrently. Um, they both happen over spring break. And then the Mississippi section actually happens after classes end in May. Um, but those are opportunities to go into those communities and work on different projects. Um, while I was a student, I actually went to both Mississippi and Grenada and the US Virgin Islands, which isn't a course, but it was a separate opportunity. Um, with the Grenada one, we we're able to work with like Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, the Ministry of Education there with Mississippi. We learned how to um, use um, the American Community Survey data and census data to create community profiles that we're able to present and share with the community. And we even had the mayor of that town attend as well. And we are partnered with students at Ole Miss. Um, and the Texas one, it's on the border. I can't remember exactly the projects that they work on, but the projects are developed each year in partnership with our partners on the ground. So it's based on the needs that they have. And over the course of the class, you're sort of building and preparing for that week that you'll actually spend in the community and do um, project-based work. So this is another way to look at where we've worked in the past or what's ongoing. So students in the past have gone to the Dominican Republic, China, Kentucky, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Texas, Michigan, of course, because we are based in Michigan. So there's always going to be things to do in Michigan, um, but different parts of Michigan as well. So this is really to show the variety of work that can be done. Partnerships are always being developed um, and they grow and change daily. Another opportunity outside of FAST is the Outler Schweitzer Fellowship. So this is a one-year interdisciplinary leadership development program that creates sustainable change in community health. With this, you're able to partner with a local community agency and you will be able to design a service project that you're going to work on over the course of the year. There is a small stipend with it. Um, it is an international fellowship, so you'd be under the Detroit chapter. You will have a cohort of people that you'll be working with and you'll have like um, mentors or sessions with them as well. Um, where I'll come in is if you want to do this fellowship, you will reach out and have a conversation about ideas for your project and sort of get you connected to community organizations, especially if you're not familiar with the area. Um, it can be a great resource in that way for you. And I'll pass it over to Kate to talk about the awesome work that the contact tracing court is doing. And really quick before we do that, there's a question in the um, Q&A about um, do the courses have an additional fee associated with them? Yeah, so typically there is an additional fee. Um, I don't want to say what it will be in the future, but it's usually like you pay for your flight and then like a lot of the other stuff is covered. So like your food, where you'll stay and things like that. But there is some sort of buying that you have. However, I will say, don't let that be a deterrent because the university has lots of pools and buckets of money. Um, for instance, I remember, um, I think I got funding from the library through a library grant to be able to go on one of these projects. So if it's something that you're interested in and let's say finance is a barrier, there can be conversations around ways where you can access different pools of money and maybe you have to do something additional like present <laughs> about what you did, but it could be a conversation. Yeah. Thanks, Shade. Um, all right, so contact tracing core is sort of another branch um, of the, the practice office uh, and is in response to the need um, that has arisen uh, from, from COVID-19 um, and is, you know, a, a public health 
strategy and response that, that students right now uh, within the School of Public Health and actually across the university and different health sciences schools um, are able to learn and actually do, um, you know, as, as little as four hours or as many, you know, some students are working 20 plus hours a week as contact tracers. Um, and so this, this was uh, developed in collaboration with um, the university's environment, health and safety um, department and the Washtenaw County Health Department. So it is a, a true um, labor of love and collaboration, I would say, um, and it, it with the goal of, you know, keeping students and the universe and staff and faculty in the university community um, safe while also helping, um, you know, lessen some of the stress on the, the county health department. So it is, it is truly, um, an action-packed uh, opportunity to, to really see um, how how COVID-19 is impacting our, our university and also getting to talk with, with different um, close contacts. And so um, these uh, contact tracers are uh, conducting student outreach, so making phone calls and actually having interviews with, with close contacts of positive uh, COVID-19 cases, going through the monitoring process and understanding the needs um, for students who um, either contract or have come into contact with someone who has contracted COVID-19. So um, this is an opportunity to, um, it, it started as part of a class, but um, the there is funding. So a lot of our students are um, actually getting paid or, or doing work study through this opportunity. So, um, and then there are students from the School of Nursing, Dentistry, uh, Pharmacy, Social Work, uh, School of Social Work students are providing sort of student, student support. Um, and uh, yeah, it is, you know, it's something that is, you know, going to continue, um, I, you know, beyond, um, well, like this, this year. And then, um, you know, if you decide to come here, it, you may also um, have the opportunity to continue um, depending on where, where we're at. Um, another piece of the um, practice office is the applied practice experience. And so, um, thanks Shade. So, so this is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it is a, uh, a graduation requirement where students are working to working alongside an external practice partner. So many of the projects and activities that Shade talked about with FAST um, are perfect examples of a, an applied practice experience. And so the real goal of an APEX is um, understanding what is the need of the community or practice partner and uh, providing um, a product or a deliverable that is meeting the need or the request of that practice that practice partner. So it's a it's an opportunity to see um, public health more broadly. Oftentimes um, apex opportunities are not necessarily specific to um, a department or a specific focus, but really kind of an opportunity to see how your specialty, your area um, that you're focusing on in your department it, it is a part of a much larger picture. Um, and so oftentimes students will um, do their APEX in conjunction with their summer internships, and sometimes they are separate opportunities um, or separate experiences. And so we do have um, a way for, for students to be able to see some of the different opportunities that are available um, and the, the products or deliverables that are associated with them. Um, but it is a great way. Uh, there's, there's no time commitment as well. So it could be something that is for an afternoon or a day, or it could be something that is more like a class that lasts for a, a semester. Um, but it is a great way to really take what you've learned in the classroom and apply it um, outside of the classroom. Um, and things like FAST are a great thing um, to do to, to uh, fulfill that, that requirement. And a nice Muhammad Ali quote uh, to end our, our prepared uh, section, but also want to open it up to questions that, that you all have or things that you're, you're thinking about um, as, as prospective students that we can maybe um, help with or provide our own experiences or insights about. Okay, so I see a question. Is the Schweitzer Fellowship intended for specific MPH departments? No, it is not intended for specific departments. Um, there are students who've been from epidemiology or HBHE or nutrition. So 
Um, any department can apply so long as your project is community focused or oriented and you're working with a specific community organization. It's really about that project more so than your specific focus area. While we may be waiting to have uh, questions come in, um, for our prospective students, to, to both of our facilitators here today, what would you say you guys like best about working in public health practice and with our current students? Great question. <laughs> um, so I've been in this role now, I started at the end of September. So I'm relatively new to the practice office from the perspective of staff. Um, but I really enjoy being back working with FAST in the capacity of an advisor. Like FAST was very instrumental for me when I was a student, um, getting sort of what I wanted to better understand things within the classroom. Like I learned best by doing, so that's what I really enjoyed about it. And now I get to give that to students and that's been really great. Yeah, and I will say that I, um, like I mentioned in my, intro kind of stumbled into public health from public education. Um, but what I've loved learning in the last few years is the intersection between education and, and public health and um, how connected those two things are and how much of public health um, is really about, you know, educating individuals and, and populations. And so I think the practice office is a uh, at a, in a really unique position to really um, be able to work closely, not just with, with students in our you know, Michigan public health community, but also the larger community to understand what are the needs and how can our school and the students and faculty best collaborate with, um, with the, the larger um, community out, outside of the university. And so I enjoy getting to um, think about and, and talk with partners about what is gonna set our students up for, for success outside of um, or post you know, graduation. And so I really enjoy um, learning about that and really seeing the ways public health impacts our daily lives in ways that I, I never um, considered before I started working here. I see we have quite a few questions. Oh, lovely. <laughs> um, I can answer this one. What is the process for joining FAST? Is it open to all grad students or do you have to submit an application? There is an application. It usually goes live in the fall semester. Um, so probably look out, I would say in August um, and it'll probably go into like the first few weeks of school. Um, and the application is just to understand why you want to be a FAST member, what do you hope to get out of it, their general questions. From there, there'll be an orientation and training that needs to be completed. And it's open to any graduate student, master's or PhD level across all departments. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with the question in the chat from um, Michaela. And this is, so we, so the practice office sort of works in collaboration with the career development office and the career de so um, the career development office is sort of in charge of the summer internship process but there is an internal um, portal for both internship and even job opportunities as well and apex projects um, and so it's all it's internal internally facing for for our students um, where our partners both for apex and then you know companies or nonprofits and things like that post to um, the the job board um, so yes and then I would also encourage you to attend or maybe listen to the recording of the the career development um, presentation that they did sort of similar to what Shade and I are doing right now because um, that will also offer more insights. Um, in terms of Apex classes, Natalie, I'm looking at your question in the Q&A now. Um, so they, it's it kind of, some of it is a bit department specific, um, but what I, one thing I'll plug here is the Ginsburg Center, which is the university. Um, they have what is called um, the Community Technical Assistance collaborative, CTAC is the, the acronym for that. And those are all local partners. Um, and so it's it's not necessarily a class, um, but it is an opportunity to do an APEX with, 
with local areas, um, in addition to some of the um, projects that Shade mentioned that FAST already does as well that are that are more, more local. I don't know if that answers your question. Um, let's see. Um, the, the MSW MPH program, the dual, that's a great question. And I think that is probably a question for your department. You'll want to ask. So each department has a has a um, student services coordinator or an internship coordinator um, in conjunction with the contact at the School of Social Work, I think can help answer some of those or some of that question. And the, with the MSW program, the internship, you're not going to have a hard time finding an internship. They have lots of community partners, and you will have a field faculty person to sort of guide you through that process. Um, how do you target certain programs for students who may have work experience in public health field? So for people with work experience, these opportunities still are good opportunities because they, it may fill gaps in specific aspects or areas of your work experience. I don't know what your specific experiences are, but when we think of projects or the projects that come up, it's based off of conversations that I have with students or ideas that may come up or community partners may have specific needs. So for instance, with the Community Family Life Center, the curriculum that students are working on, one of the, the person working on it, she was a teacher for seven years before coming back to the School of Public Health to get her degree. Um, and she's in the EHS department. So she's pulling on that background right now. So the projects offer that opportunity as well. Um, after the training, what are the weekly or monthly commitments for being a part of FAST? So we do have like a monthly meeting, um, but I will say with FAST, the commitment is as much as you make it. So you can be as involved and <laughs> sign up for as many projects as you want, or you can say, oh, I'm only gonna do one or two a month. Um, once you're in FAST, you're in FAST for life, you'll always be a FAST member and there'll be always opportunities posted, but I understand that the semester can get hectic, life happens, um, so you get as much of it as you put into it. I hope that answers that question. And I think that was all the questions. Yeah, these are great questions. Oh, we have, are the graduate programs funded? Oh, great question. Um, with regards to that, we do have Dean scholarships available within each department. Um, in addition to that, we also have our priority deadline for most of our programs coming up on December 1st. So we'd like to see a complete application prior to that to ensure that you're fully considered for our Dean scholarships. Um, Again, that would depend on what degree program you're interested in and what department. So there are several factors that come into play when it comes to that process. Um, so if you do have more specific questions, I would encourage you to reach out to our team at sph-inquiries at umich.edu. One thing that I would like to share in regards to that process is that there is no separate application um, to be considered for that. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well. Um, other than that though, please feel free to reach out and we're happy to, to help you um, with that process. I think at this point, if we are done with answering all of our questions, uh, we will sign off this afternoon. So thank you all for coming. Um, any parting words from our, our speakers today? Um, good luck in your applications. And if you have any other questions about practice or FAST, it, there is information about FAST on the school website. So if you look up Public Health Action Support Team, we have a site on there. We also have social media pages so that you can follow those and see what's going on as well. And our emails are up as well. Yeah, I'll put the um, link to the website in the chat in case you're interested in learning more. But I echo what Shade said. Thank you all so much for taking the time to attend this afternoon. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye.